Hello, friends. Hey, guys. Hello Welcome there. to the stream. Shut this. It's chilly. Ooh, What's it's up? It's going to get toasty in a minute. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome to the stream. This is our community challenge. Uh, we fundraised communal community channel points so that we will be cooking for you guys on stream tonight. So I hope you enjoy. And um, I guess when we'll get started, or we can introduce what we're making. So what are we making, Sly? Goulash. <laughs> and why is goulash significant? So my parents and I we went to Germany when I was younger, probably 15 years old. We went into the Alps and we went to a restaurant and uh, in German, Oma means grandmother. She had made a pot of goulash and I loved it so much. I had like three bowls of it. And it's just one of those childhood memories that I love goulash. So we went back to Germany a few years ago and we searched high and low for an equivalent goulash to this childhood goulash that Sly had eaten. And uh, I don't, we found something very close, but it was not the same. So um, then I began the hunt for a recipe, a good recipe for goulash, uh, so that I could make it for him at home. And this is still not his childhood goulash, but, <laughs> but it's definitely close and he really likes it. And this is one of his favorite recipes that I make. So uh, we're gonna make that for you guys tonight. Um, and so this is, um, I know that some people have different names for goulash and it means different things around the world, but we're gonna be making the sort of German slash Hungarian version of goulash tonight. Um, and so if you guys are interested in making the goulash yourself, um, I am using an adapted recipe. I say adapted because I make a lot of changes when I cook, usually after I've used the recipe once. Um, but I have it linked in the chat for you if you go exclamation point recipe. Um, it is a Rachel Ray recipe from foodnetwork.com, but I've adapted it to be more similar to the um, goulash that Sly remembers. So uh, the first major change that the original recipe calls for ground beef, but I like to make it with chunks of stew meat and that's so that there's like a little chunkier and um, a little bit more soupy. Um, so first things first, uh, they didn't have stew meat at the store. So we're going to chop up our own beef, own beef, <laughs> uh, which Sly's going to help me with. So um, I just grabbed a, um, a chuck roast, which is very similar to um, the type of like stew meat that we would use. So basically, <clears throat> I'm just going to take um, I have two of these because I like to make I don't know how to make things in small quantities. So. Um, we make lots of goulash at a time. Is it throwing you off that I'm down at your level? It is very much throwing me <laughs> off that you're like squatting in the kitchen. So Sly's taller than me, and so it's hard to see, but... Just, just a little bit. Just, just by <laughs> that much right there. <laughs> we can change... You want to like lift the camera up a little bit so they can see your face better or no? No, I like this. Okay. This, is, this is good right here. I'm just okay. doing this. No, it's so weird. Here, I'll, I'll even go a little bit shorter than you. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Also, um, you know, as usual. Cheers. Drinks. A little uh, Captain and Coke. A little bit of a dirty martini. Red wine would also go very appropriately with this. Okay. Um, you will probably occasionally hear my children as well because they are here. Um, they are currently upstairs playing in the room, but um, they will very likely need us to come like need it, mitigate their fighting at some point. So just so you guys know, um, that's okay. Um, and I can see the chat, so feel free to ask me questions or if you wanna know more about it, we'll probably have Sly tell the story a little later when more people join again, but. We won, 2831. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were a little late on stream because we were watching the very tail end of the Florida State Miami game. If you guys know me, I'm a huge, Florida State fan, and I was really looking forward to them beating Miami this year, uh, which we did at the very tail end. It was such a nail biter. <clears throat> um, so I do always keep my recipe handy. So I have my recipe here, and this is Sly's uh, edited, less version. edited, shortened version. The the man version. <laughs> so he's never actually made the goulash with me. So I'm gonna have him like kind of learn a little bit how to make the goulash as well as me cooking it for you guys. 
Um, and once again, if you're just joining, if you want to know the recipe that we're making, you can take a peek at it um, by typing exclamation point recipe in the chat. Um, and that'll take a link to the website that I have adapted this recipe from. So one of the first things we got to do with the meat is dry it off. So there's two knives. I think you're a little ahead of me. Hmm? All yeah. you to just... She's already, she's already cheating. <laughs> I'm not cheating. It's not a race. We're making it together. It, it's a race. It is not a race. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do with this, since we don't have stew meat, we're going to take this meat and just kind of roughly cut it into like one inch-ish cubes. Exactly one inch? <laughs> I Slice. Am, I am prepared. <laughs> Very precise measurements. Also, um, as far as like supplies for making this recipe, um, I will go over the ingredients as I add them. I'm not going to just list them out for you right now, but, um, we do, I like to make, <laughs> I like to make this soup in a, um, cast iron Dutch oven, which is one of my favorite, like soup and stew. Mmm, meats. <laughs> Sly's favorite thing in the world. Um. Stew meat and chuck roast can also be kind of like fatty, but we're gonna cook it and simmer it for a while So it off, right? it'll yeah, you want to dry it off uh, The reason we dry it off is because it doesn't add any if you dry it off. It doesn't add extra liquid to the to Like the broth and it gets a much better like crust and sear when you put it in the pan So um, it's something that I used to always see in recipes I was like well, that's silly and I would just like put my meat in but I started doing it, and it makes actually a huge difference. So um, don't be skeptical. Actually dry off your meat. You don't need to, like, rinse it usually, but once you dry it off, it'll be much better. So like I said, we're just kind of roughly chopping, so this will probably take us a little bit. If... Chop, chop it and chop. <laughs> and you can take this opportunity, if you are chopping your own meat, to kind of, like, trim any of the fat that you don't want, which is always good if you like things leaner. Um, really, I don't know if there's any specific type of meat you have to use for this recipe um so if i do want to lean this out do i just toss this away yeah if you want to just you i just yeah you put it away in the trash or whatever i mean we don't need i mean this is a lot of meat it's a lot of meat it is a lot of meat um so normally the recipe calls for and i would use a three a roughly three pounds of stew meat chunks this is going to turn out to be a little over four pounds because like i said they didn't have um pre you can usually buy chopped up pre-packed stew meat we might actually not use all of the meat. We're just going to chop it up, and then we can probably just put some aside for a, another recipe. Okay. Um, but again, if you like the if you like um, it to be more of... So when oh. I made it with ground meat oh. the first time... Should we point it down so they can see it's cutting? Or just kind of like, eh? Uh, sure. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yay, now you can kind of see us cutting. So, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, what was I saying? If you, all right, so if you don't like it to be soupy, like if you like it to be a little thicker, um, so when I made it originally with the like ground meat, it, it actually comes out kind of like this, the same kind of texture as like a sloppy joe. So if you like that, you know, kind of more hearty, um, thicker stew, then, then you can always you you can follow the recipe as it's listed with ground meat. Um, I actually think she uses yeah ground beef or lamb. So mine, I'm not really chopping it super small. Mine are kind of big, but that's, that's gonna, good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. So we're just kind of cut, cutting it up. So hi everybody! If you're just joining, we're making goulash. This is welcome. <laughs> one of one of Sly's favorite dishes that I make and it's one that you know takes a little bit of time so it'll be something good we can fill up you know about an hour hour and a half or so on stream and if you guys are sticking around we're probably gonna play some Jackbox games afterwards so yeah. um we just played some uh, last night at we a friend's did. house and... we played some new ones that we hadn't played before and they were so fun so I definitely want to try some of them with you guys tonight um yeah, good yeah, definitely, like, you know, let me know if you guys have had goulash before or if you have a different type of goulash. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Um, hi, WWE King. You come to watch us cook? I am trimming some of this extra fat. 
Um, all right, and after this, I will actually, while we're cutting this, I'm gonna turn on the stove. Um, She's giving me a chance to catch up. So what you wanna do is you wanna have it on like medium, medium high. Um, and then before we add the meat, we're gonna put some like, oil in the pan. Um, we, we've been using a lot of avocado oil lately, um, but you can also use olive oil or whatever oil you have. I wouldn't recommend butter because it has a high, a low smoke point, which means it's going to get smoky if you try to sear the meat in butter. But what we want is to get the pan nice and hot before we add the meat. So we get a nice, like browned thing. And that's another thing that the cast iron Dutch oven is very good at, which is, um, giving you like a really nice like crust and a sear. Uh, but then it also like maintains the heat really well. So it gives a very nice even simmer um, when you turn the heat down. So I highly recommend it if you don't have one. Um, you can get them a lot of different places. I think we got mine at Costco. This meat is awesome. It's like literally just falling apart. Yeah, so this is good. It's a little, it'll feel like, if you were to just like cook it and eat it like a steak, it would be kind of tough. But the way we're gonna cook it and stewing it, um, it does get kind of, um, another recipe I make, it does get nice and tender. Another recipe I make with this type of meat that Sly really likes is this, is French dip sandwiches. Yes. So French dip is typically like <clears throat> sliced prime rib, but I make it in the- I think it was invented in France? Slow cooker. I either do it in the slow cooker or in the instant pot. And I find that when I do it in the, um, instant pot, the chuck roast actually holds up much better to the pressure cooking than I think it recommends the recipe it originally called for brisket. Um, but brisket's also more expensive and you can definitely get away with the chuck roast. Um, and it, it sears, I mean, it, it um, cooks up nicely in the uh, instant pot, so. All right, so if we think, I mean, if I just wanna add all the meat, I can just make it like, we, we have enough stuff to make it kind of like a double. We could just rather okay, yeah, include all that. the meat. Yeah. So make it. So I'm probably just gonna kind of be generous with the ingredients. It's not quite double the amount of meat, but it'll be close to that. So Ooh, we're both just about done. That's good. All right. Now I'm gonna have to. After we add the meat, I'm gonna have to wash one of the cutting boards because we have, and we do have to chop an onion and some roasted red peppers soon. So. Always good to wash your hands in between, especially when you're touching raw meat. Now. I just kind of rinsed mine for the moment because I'm going to touch it again, but then I will actually wash with soap and water and wash my knives and cutting board before we um, chop any vegetables. So, all right, mine's just about ready to go. So what I'm going to do is um, add the oil to the pan and then we'll add our meat. Okay. Good. Man. Good. Back up. All right. All right. So Welcome back. Just like a couple swirls of the oil. Like I said, we're using avocado oil today. Avocado and olive, avocado oil or like canola oil have really high smoke points. Those are really good for really high sears. It's really great if you're trying to make a, a steak in a cast iron pan. Okay. What's next? Um, next, we're going <clears throat> to. It's gonna be basically adding things. So what we're gonna do is make our spice blend next. So if you wanna grab a, a little bowl. Add Worcestershire sauce, paprika, rosemary. We'll add everything. Marijuana. It's not marijuana, <laughs> it's it <looks> margarine. Like... <laughs> right, that, that looks like. <laughs> it does not look like marijuana. Number, number two, the fifth word. You be the judge. <clears throat> All right, meat is going in. A lot of meat. Okay. Can you wash that? Wash that and then wash one of these knives. Okay. We're going in with the meat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so much meat. I was could, nice. you, could you say you're going in raw? <laughs> going in raw. Got him. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to wash my hands with soap this time. We're done with the raw meat. Sly is doing the dishes, guys. Rare moment, everyone, take a take a clip. Sly actually doing the dishes. <laughs> proof. It's proof that I do this. 
Also, let us know how the uh, the audio sounds. We're pretty sure it's working pretty well, but we want to double check. Yeah, we're using my Yeti mic, so hopefully it, it sounds pretty good. So, oop, I lost one chunk of beef. So this is quite a bit of meat. I would not recommend using quite this amount of meat, especially in a in a pot like this, but um, it is what it is. And a lot of times whenever I'm searing meat, I always do a little bit of salt and pepper while it sears because nobody likes unseasoned meat. So I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to actually turn that up really high. That's not noise. This is a noise. <laughs> All right, so we're going to make our spice blend, which is going to be, I'll go through with you guys. Oh, awesome. Give to watch me cook. Well, thank you. Okay, so our spice blend is going to consist mostly of paprika. Look that paprika. And then also this hot Hungarian paprika, which is like almost like cayenne pepper, but not quite as spicy, because we don't want this to be very spicy, but this will add a little bit of a depth flavor. Um, Marjoram, not marijuana. <laughs> um, and then the other is, is usually I prefer to use fresh rosemary, but I couldn't find it to, this time. So I'm gonna use some dry rosemary. Um, same thing, I ran out of garlic, so we'll be using garlic powder instead of garlic today. So I'm going to measure out our spices into just like a bowl so we can add them all at once to the meat. So we are going to do, it calls for two tablespoons of um, paprika, but I'm going to add, like we had a little over four pounds of meat, so it's not quite like double the recipe. Um, actually, maybe it is. Yeah, it is kind of double, so I will just double all the recipes. That's fine. Okay. More goulash. More goulash. It also like keeps very well. You can freeze it. Um, anybody who knows me knows I don't make small recipes. I usually make giant recipes. So. And then I have leftovers for months. <laughs> and I'm the only one who eats the leftovers. Hey, I don't hear you complaining. Except for right now. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do four tablespoons of paprika. And I just kind of eyeball, I mean, it's not exact, so. One, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Good thing we brought the count. <laughs> Three, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh, that's a lot. Of, that's okay. Five and a half, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> it was a five and a half. Close. <laughs> All right, so the rule with, like, uh, dry to fresh herbs is, is generally, like, if it calls for a tablespoon, you use a teaspoon of dry. Um, so it does require... Um, two tablespoons of fresh rosemary leaves. So we're gonna do four teaspoons of dry rosemary. So that's gonna be our rosemary. And this, when you add the spices to the meat, like I cannot tell you how like amazing the, the house will smell. Like I wish we had like smell-o-vision. Um, and then we need a tablespoon of marjoram. So we'll do two tablespoons. Hopefully I have enough. WWE said he uh, just got home with the money. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, one teaspoon, not tablespoon. I thought it was a teaspoon. That's about one teaspoon. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. So two teaspoons of dried marjoram, because obviously I don't have any fresh. I've never actually seen fresh marjoram in the store, so. Um, and then I would do three to four cloves of garlic, but again, I don't have the garlic with me. So we're going to go ahead and add some garlic powder to our spice mix. Sly is doing great work. He is monitoring. I, I'm holding the team he up. Is, uh, he is uh, stirring the meat, right? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm just going to add about like a couple teaspoons of garlic powder to this. Hopefully it's not too garlic. I don't think it'll be too. Actually, two is probably enough. I don't want to. I can always add more later. I don't want it to be too garlicky. So. And then our hot paprika, which is the spicy part. Usually we do two teaspoons. <clears throat> so we can probably do like. Well, my tablespoon doesn't fit in there, so let's do like like at least three tablespoons or teaspoons. I don't want to put too much because my kids like to eat it, and I don't want them to be spicy. They are eagerly waiting for me to make this, so. Um, 
All right, so the spice mix is made. So the in addition, good news, friends. The meat has been stirred. <laughs> in addition to the spice mix, the next step we will be adding the Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Worcestershire, which um, for a regular recipe we use. Um, I always forget the measurements, but that was just meat puppies. <laughs> Um, where can I find it? Oh, three tablespoons. So we're going to be using like a lot of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Worcestershire. I can say that one, no problem. I know, I'm doing it but... for comedic effect, Sly. Nah, I don't Anyways, think you are. I was. Oh, well, so I we have more viewers now, so why don't you retell the story about this, uh, you know, unicorn goulash that we are trying to recreate. So when I was, uh, 15 or 16, my parents and I, we, uh, we were in Germany and, uh, we were in, uh, we went to the Zugspitz. And uh, there was a hotel right there at the base of the mountains for the Alps, and we we were we had a little bit of time to spare, so we went to some restaurant, and uh, they weren't quite open yet, but they let us come in. And uh, the Oma, which stands for grandmother in German, she was there, and she had just so made like a giant pot of goulash, like I mean a huge pot of it. And uh, I was hungry, so my parents were like, "All right, we'll take your chance to eat." So I, I ate, and I, and I enjoyed it so much. I ended up having like two or three bowls of it, and and I just remember they were so impressed with how much I could eat that they the uh, Oma came out and was just like, oh, it's such a growing boy and all that stuff. And so goulash is one of those things that just uh, stands out to me for nostalgia and, and just because it was so good. Is and, and that's but that's like the story of all foods that I love. Like the first time I have it, and if I just like it so much, I will eat myself to exploding with it <laughs> and then and then i will seek it in the future never able to perfectly mimic it but this is pretty close we, we've gotten pretty close all right so i'm gonna chop up two small onions normally i'd just do one big onion but you know it was uh let me go get my goggles real quick actually there's this trick and it actually works you get a paper towel that's wet and you put it on the corner of your cutting board and it actually kind of like absorbs all of the onion this so yeah do you want to do the onions or do you want me to do the onions i'll stand back here and uh test Ch your theory chat up chat up <laughs> chat up my chat hello chat <laughs> this is me chatting you up you can also throw away my onion trash okay no, no, no. i can manage that <laughs> oh god it's already in the eyes how is it already in the eyes i haven't even started <laughs> yet i can smell it <laughs> don't be a baby i'm not why are you crying, Sly? Uh, I'm not crying yet. But the tears will be flowing. <laughs> How are you tonight, wizard? What have y'all been getting into now? I saw a lot of uh, Stardew Valley going on earlier. Yeah, I did. I saw that too. I don't even think I own it yet. You don't. You should. You muted. Oh, no. We, how long muted. were we muted? How long were we muted? Sorry, hopefully not long. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to blame Primo on that one. It's you, you're part. the one who put your paper hey, down I, I on did that top. like half an hour ago. You did Thank not you do that much. half an hour ago. By hey. the way, here, here's uh, the recipe. <laughs> in, in my terminology that I can understand. Those are Sly's instructions. Um, yeah, if you guys want the recipe for this, um, I do use a slightly adapted version of a Food Network recipe, I think, by Rachel Ray. And um, if you do exclamation point recipe in the chat, that'll pull up. Um... <laughs> it's backwards. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, we didn't flip the camera. Uh, we didn't uh, invert the camera. Um, oh, here. Uh, I'll put it in backwards. <laughs> good, good times. All right, how is our meat? Is it looking nice and brown, pretty much? Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. almost completely cooked already. All right, yeah, good. Okay, so it's nice and brown. We get a, can we get a, can we get a pot shot over here? Oh, yeah, yeah. You guys want to see the pot? See the meat and me. Dun, dun, dun. Can't get too much closer. Okay. Can you see this beautiful browned meat? Um, but for all of you beginner cooks out there, uh, browning is a verb, not a color. <laughs> Don't judge me. Just wanted to throw that out there for the rest of the world. Okay, I'm adding the seasoning mix, and let's, so I'll let slide do the filming. All right, so we're going to add the seasoning blend all in there. It's a lot. It looks like a lot, but it is going to be amazing once we get it in. Oh, thanks, Shorty. <laughs> I, tr I tried to convince Prima to braid my hair like hers, but she wasn't going for it. <laughs> Well, if we had thought of a little bit ahead of time, we would have gotten you some leader hosen to wear. I yeah, know that, that that was also on the agenda. All right, so now man, I love how red it already looks. It, it looks, looks so, so good. like red. So this is a very like tomato, like deep, rich, like red sauce. Um. Oh yeah, like the smell of the paprika with the rosemary is so. I wish that you could smell it. You can't. Smell it. It's funny because but... like it, it's almost an earthy smell because it's a lot of. Earthy spices. Yeah, it's very like kind of dry. Like you've got the paprika and that, and you know, I always at, at every step, pretty much, I always add a little bit of salt and pepper because I like my things well seasoned. So a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, so we'll get ready for the next steps. Oh, we gotta wear the Worcestershire sauce too. Worcestershire. Worcestershire. Okay, so we need about six tablespoons. So you can put that back You're while I back. do this. Just going back. Go back to your home, guys. That's where you belong. On top of the laptop. Just adding a Worcestershire. Yeah. There, there, it is a gas uh, stove. It is a gas stove, yeah. I was going to say grill. And it was like, <laughs> there is a fire, fire yeah. <laughs> it's just underneath the pot. All right, so... We're gonna let that just like settle for a few minutes. And the next step will be the tomato paste, or sorry, the onions. We'll go in next. We're just gonna let that marinate a little bit. We are cooking with gas. I love gas stove. Um, I'm, I was spoiled. I grew up with a gas stove. Oh yeah, the gas is awesome. I remember when she first moved in with me and had an electric stove and she was just always angry about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I was also the only one who did any of the cooking at that point. So, Sly does actually a, quite a bit of the cooking nowadays. We use one of the um, meal kit, like delivery meal kits, um, Home Chef, and the recipes are very easy. So Sly actually cooks them frequently when he's home in the evening. So your mom couldn't figure it out. <laughs> oh no. Um, after we add the onions, the next thing we'll be adding is tomato paste, mm. so I just preempted that with opening the can. Um, actually, while, while this goes, I'm going to start the water for that. So this recipe is, is, we like to serve it over egg noodles with sour cream. That is not how goulash is traditionally served, but it makes for a really heartier meal. So, and the recipe originally calls for it too, so... Uh, I'm going to start the water boiling for the pasta, and I'm going to add some salt. <clears throat> Big thing, of course, kosher salt. Just So we're going to get that going. Electric boogie woogie woogie. <laughs> oh, shorty. I just realized the guy's the glass is broken. Oh, you did? Okay. When did that happen? I have no idea. I mean, we have a lot of them that get chipped, but that's new. Yeah, it's broken, broken. I don't know if you can see it. 
It's like in the broken glass. Uh, maybe. Maybe you can see it. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to put this back up a little bit. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah. When do the onions go in? Um, it should just be just about so, now, I think. My instructions clearly say chop onions, but at no point do we put them in. I'm sorry, I did it last minute. Oh, man, yeah. oh, she's taunting me with this one. I don't know if you guys heard the story earlier because uh, we were muted, but first time, first time I ever like cooked cooked for myself, I made hamburger helper, and I didn't realize that the term brown ground beef meant to cook it. I thought it was talking about ground beef that was brown ground beef. So I didn't cook the meat before I started the entire dish and it was taking so long to cook I was like I don't think I did this right so I called her and she was like yeah you were supposed to cook the meat before you put it into everything else and I was just like well damn and then after that I never cooked again <laughs> well I mean I can make a mean omelet so I, I got I got some things that I really enjoyed making and I, and I and love he's a, grilling he's the grill master <clears throat> Ooh, speaking of that one time we combined the two he made really delicious grilled steaks and we had <clears throat> leftovers and the next day he did. He chopped up the steak and made grilled steak omelets, and amazing, oh, amazing. Damn. You're right. There was that onions on there. It just went way down. Oh, look at that! Oh. Damn it, Shorty, you're supposed to be on my side. <laughs> There's no sides. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you do like to add the onions, sure. please? Slides adding the onion. At this point, if you had fresh chopped garlic, you'd add the garlic at this point. But as I mentioned earlier, we didn't have any fresh garlic, so I'm using garlic powder. All right. So onions are added. I'm going to stir that in. Let them kind of cook a few minutes. And then we'll be <laughs> adding all of our liquid ingredients. He's like, no onions, no onions. I'm illiterate. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is living up to all your guys' hype about <laughs> me and Sly cooking. I think the most unfortunate part is that you guys can't enjoy it. Like, I, I, I wish know. everyone could come like, visit and taste it. We could it. be like the Emerald show and like cook it and then give it to you guys. It's unfortunate. But unfortunately, we can't. Okay, so while we're getting ready for the next part, so the next thing you can do is uh, take this, drain the liquid, and then just roughly chop them. We'll be adding those last. So the what I'm having Sly do is drain and chop some roasted red peppers. Um, it's the recipe originally calls for like you buying red peppers and then charring them yourself, which I'm not all about. So we bought a jar of roasted red peppers, which works just fine. And I have had a ta a time or two where I tried to make it and I didn't couldn't find the roasted red peppers, depending on where your grocery store is, what they have. Um, I've also substituted for just plain raw bell peppers at that point. Red bell peppers. Um, How drained? Like, like super drained? They don't drained have to be or? super dry. No, no, no. Just, you don't want, like, you're going to pour them out here. So you don't want, like, it to be, like, a soup on the cutting board, right? So the roasted red peppers, um, usually when you buy them, they're in, like, like slabs of pepper. It would definitely be cold by the time it's out there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What the hell was that? I don't know. I'm, just, I'm thinking like we might have needed more onion because there's so much meat. <laughs> it's okay. This pot is quite full of meat, and I have to tell you guys, it smells uh, amazing. Uh, lots of liquid, anyways. Yeah, and there's like so my the best <sighs> thing is this. Oh my god, two idiots cooking, shorty. That's pretty. Accurate. We have been missing that. You, no, that needs to. You were happen. talking about us. No, you were uh, talking about him and Vicklos. <laughs> so I mean, this is one idiot cooking. Uh, we're halfway there. <laughs> wow. I mean, you're a pilot and an engineer. I think you can not burn down the kitchen. I hope, at least. I mean, I got a very engineer. What the hell is happening? It sounds like someone's like bombing something out there. It's uh, it's like the maintenance crews and stuff where they. Oh like, yeah, true. Okay. Stuff. So we added the onions. We let those like cook for another like five chop, minutes chop, chop. or whatever. Like like that. That's good. It's just they don't have to be perfect. Well, I'm just, just asking. I don't know how. Just like a rough chop. chop. They don't okay. have to be so. They don't have to be like super t small dice or anything. But you don't want them in strips. You do want them to be like in semi like cubes at least. Um, you can also even if you want to even be lazier, you can buy the roasted red peppers already chopped um, in a jar. Um, 
I like to chop them because I'm kind of a fan of like irregular pieces because it makes it gives it more texture. Okay, so now again we're making double, so I'm gonna be doing like four or two tea or blah, blah, blah. That good? <laughs> That's good. Um it's how much of tomato paste? Okay, so two tablespoons or so four tablespoons of um tomato paste. The best thing in making is something like this, like a soup or a stew, is like it doesn't <clears> have <throat> to be perfect. Like it doesn't all have to be the same size. Alright, so I'm adding tomato paste. I chopped those peppers so good. Tablespoons. You didn't get to see any of it, but here it is. The final product. Beautiful. Um and I cook I cook on very I'm actually like I'm I'm measuring things more for you guys today than I normally do. A lot of times I just kinda eyeball things and wing it. To be fair. Like I'm adding a little extra tomato paste than is required. Definitely, some of you are lighting off fireworks or like shooting someone at this point. Probably fireworks. It could be fireworks, yeah. All right. So this is like, like the way that this recipe goes is you kind of like layer in the flavor. So like we first do the meat and then we do like these like very earthy, all the spices. Um, honestly, like fresh rosemary makes a huge difference in this recipe. I unfortunately just had the dried today, but fresh rosemary would be super amazing so now it's already kind of like starting to thicken up we got a bit of a thick sauce here i don't know if i can get us a visual here. you ready for the uh peppers not yet um tomato paste just went in um we got a little bit for a little bit yeah so and then then the red peppers will come all right so we'll, we'll take a look we'll take a gander like in 2004 yeah that was that that's pretty good <laughs> all right I I don't you can see it yeah but like you can kind of see it's it's like looking very like Dark red, like almost like a brick red color, um, steaming. So we're getting, we're reducing down like the liquid from the meat. So yeah, let's move the paper towel, towel so it doesn't catch on fire, please. Um, but yeah, it's looking very. And it's don't mind us. We're not a fire hazard. <laughs> All right. So next step is the red peppers. So Sly's gonna add in the red peppers. Without getting all your the, rosemary uh... bushes. Oh, that's sad. Um, and then we're gonna add. Um, the rest of our like liquid components. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just stirring in the red peppers. And this just adds like another layer of sort of texture. Do I need to wash this again? Well, you just rinse it, it's fine. And then for the liquids, we would normally be doing like a cup of tomato sauce. Um, I don't know if you guys like if you guys have an Aldi near you, but this is one of my favorite jar sauce. Um, you can also use homemade sauce, obviously, but um, Aldi makes this really good organic marinara sauce, which is delicious. It's a super good dip for mozzarella sticks. Just saying, um, but in general, like if I needed a jar of sauce, that's what I like to use. Um, so I'm doing like uh, it'll be end up being four cups of beef broth and two cups of pasta sauce. Um, I need a measuring bowl thing. What kind of sauce? Like a tomato sauce? Yes. So, so if she was to make her her sauce and you put it in this dish, like amazing. I have used my own homemade. I make a good homemade sauce as well, which I do um, occasionally. <clears throat> but um, honestly, this is almost two cups, so I'm probably just going to add the rest of the jar. And then I'm going to wash the jar out with the beef broth so we get all of that goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. All of the goodness. I like to get so full. It does get very full um, when you're making a double. So I'm going to actually pour the beef broth into the jar of sauce. I don't want to miss out on any of that delicious tomato-ness. Um, tomato-ness. And you kind of just shake it around. Pour it in. I'm going to do the same thing with this measuring cup, which I used a little bit of the tomato sauce in. I'm going to swirl it. Swirl it. Add that. And then we're going to add the rest of the carton. This is this by itself is four cups, so we're going to add all of it. <laughs> I'm always worried it's going to overflow. It's not going to overflow. Okay, so we're going to like let it come all the way back up to like a boil, and then we'll turn it down to simmer. And the best part about a dish like this is you can literally let it simmer as long as you want. I got you so, guys. so now I've added the liquid. You can kind of see this is sort of the 
If you want like a, a like a Bavarian style, I suppose, uh, goulash, like you see how um, like kind of like thick and and deep red the broth is, and you've just got the chunks of beef and the little chunks of or, uh, red peppers. Um, and you know, like Sly likes it on the brothy side because that's like the goulash he used to have. Um, if you were making this with ground beef, then this would be much more thick. Um, but I like I said, I like to do it with the stew meat. You get really you definitely good gotta go texture. stew meat. Yeah, you gotta go stew meat because uh, I don't know, it's just more satisfying. I don't like it being thick. I, I still want it to be brothy. Yeah, but it's not really a soup. It's it's just I mean kind of a stew. It's a stew. It is a stew. Yeah, it's like a tomato pepper stew, but with yeah. beef. Yeah. Anyway. But it's delicious. It's delicious, very good. I say. Delicious. Very good. So this is like, the, so that's like the whole assembly, essentially, of it. We need to let it um, simmer, obviously, for quite a while. Well, not quite a while, but a little while. Um, and that's really just to cook the tomatoes. So like, even though, like, the tomato sauce is already cooked, it does kind of taste raw. <laughs> Things slide. You're welcome. I'm, I'm here for Simmer down, for, y'all. For right. Simmer for down. You. Simmer down. Simmer down now. Um, yeah, we want to simmer down the... Uh, just get it to a simmer, and we're going to put the lid on it and simmer. And then we'll boil our egg noodles, and that'll, I mean, pretty much be it. With the egg noodles, um, they're really good. If you have some, like, fresh parsley, you, we toss them with butter and parsley and then put the dish over it. Um, I'll probably just be doing butter today. I don't, I don't have any fresh herbs on me today, but... Um, and then, yeah, I like to put a big helping of sour cream on top because sour cream is life. Oh, so. it's so good. Very good. I'm so excited. <laughs> <clears throat> Sly is super excited to eat it. Um, so, yeah, we're going to probably let it simmer for, like, about, I guess, maybe 15 minutes. And then um, once the pasta and stuff is done, you know, then we can try some. Um, and then when we're finished with the cooking portion, I, so I apologize because I was planning on doing something for dessert as well, but... Um, it just, for reasons, <laughs> it's not going to work out tonight, but, um, we will be taking like a small break after the cooking portion. Um, but then we will be playing some community games. I, I'm definitely looking at some Jackbox games, um, for us to play and stuff. So we will be doing more community stuff still afterwards. I didn't think about this, but what are we going to do to fill the next 15 minutes of time? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. We can answer questions, trivia questions, or something. Maybe. Oh, sure, trivia, because you know you're gonna win. Um, not necessarily. We could dance and dance. Awkward dance, super awkward dance. Yeah, great. Um, what else? Well, that was that was fun. <laughs> was it as good for you as it was for us? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I can show so, the we could show this delicious. Um, loaf of Italian oh, bread man. that I'm going to bake. Those are so good. Um, another Aldi favorite. By the way, guys, I am a huge fan of Aldi. I'm not, like, sponsored or anything, but I love Aldi. Um, if you've never shopped there, Aldi, you if you're should. watching, we would like to be. Yeah, <laughs> Aldi, if you're watching. Hashtag <laughs> Aldi. Um, so I like to buy... They this is, this is also very good, but they make these, like, take-and-bake baguettes, which are just divine. So, um... To go with this delicious dinner, I'm going to be baking a loaf of this take and break Italian bread because um, Publix, okay, so we don't have a Publix up here and the rest of the grocery stores cannot compare. So, I mean, Market um, Basket's pretty close. Market Basket's pretty close. Um, Shaw's is like the bougie version. Shaw's okay, is more Shaw's, like Publix, Shaw's, sucks. Shaw's is Albertsons, if you guys from the South. Mm. No, it's, it's literally owned by the same company. Like, yeah, Shaw's yeah, yeah. and Albertsons are the same company. So, Shaw's is our version of Albertsons. Um, so, the, the, there's a couple of grocery stores up here. There's Hannaford, which is pretty good, and there's um, Market Basket. Neither of them are particularly convenient for us, um, but Aldi does Instacart, and they do have um, a lot of, like, my favorite types of food. And, like, when you buy, like, so this is, like, the Aldi bread. It's, like, ridiculously inexpensive, and... Um, it's just like we like if you're just buying like the regular stuff like pantry items, fruits and vegetables and stuff like that. A lot of times, you save a ton of money going there. Um, you know, obviously we like our name. We like certain name brand things. We obviously go to the mains to like Shaw's or Market Basket for that. But um, I buy a ton of things. Like, Aldi for literally and, everything else. Literally everything else. 
Um, and they deliver on Instacart. So, I mean, I'm a huge, yeah, also a huge fan. So I'm going to turn the oven on so we can quickly bake this when we're done. So for those of you just joining us, here's the recipe. Simple man version. It's uh, delicious. Worth a try. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, noodles. How I love these. Indeed. An Aldi? Oh, you should definitely check it out if you've never been, at least. Um, mm -hmm. Bring a quarter. You need a quarter bring to a quarter. use the shopping cart. Um, and you have to bring your own bags because they don't bag anything for you. You have to do everything yourself. You walk in, you pay a quarter to use the, the cart, and then it's got a little device that you put the quarter in. It pops out the little lock on it. Um, and then you go use it. And when you return it, you, when you push the the uh, the lock back in, it pops out the quarter in one of the other carts and you get your quarter back. Um, <laughs> and, and like she was saying, you have to bring your own bags because they don't they don't even bag your stuff. They will just put all the stuff that you just purchased out of your cart back into your cart. And then yeah. you, you go up to a counter that's behind everything to package or but, box I mean and... They sell all the reusable bags there, and they also yeah. sell, like, paper bags. So sometimes I just buy the paper bags, and then, like, um, you'd be surprised. Like, when you're just bagging it yourself, you can bag it any way you want. It's, yeah. it's kind of nice. Because uh, then you get all the cold stuff to go together, <laughs> you know. True. Um, it is not nice when you have two angry children that have been following you around <laughs> for the last true. hour. Because um, they, they do not appreciate that you have to stand at the front uh, and bag, and then they cannot climb on the countertop. So, I mean, there is that. <laughs> but um, and they always want to touch the fragile things. Of like, course. Can I put the eggs away? No. Like what about no. the bread? No. No. Um, but <clears> they <throat> also like they they have so if you if you're also a fan of Costco, which I am, um, they have their own like aisle that is like Aldi finds, which is a very Costco esque thing where they get you know cheap i not cheap but like inexpensive items like one time buy kind of stuff that like. Once it's gone, it's gone. Um, we bought a lot of, like, really good things there um, through that. Like, stuff for the kids, you know, like, stuff that, like, you don't really, like, don't, doesn't need, like, super high longevity and things like that. Um, but they have all sorts of things there. It's a really great place, honestly. Great to buy, like, Christmas, Chris, little small Christmas toys and stuff like that. What else have we made recently? What else have I cooked recently? I mean, to be honest, I've only been cooking the home chef stuff lately because we've yeah. been so busy. Um, I, I have a so. menu in my phone about yes. the things that she makes. And I have those that say that are uh, favorite and then those that just say food. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that are edible but still delicious. That doesn't put my cooking in a very good light. Oh, I made chicken soup recently. Oh, yeah, we were kind of, true. we were sick, so I made homemade chicken soup. Um, I made cupcakes for Samantha's birthday. That's true too. Those were good. I made delicious pirate cupcakes. Lily wants Minnie Mouse cupcakes, so I'm gonna make these really good strawberry cupcakes with Minnie Mouse ears on them. That's cute. That'd be cute. That yours are gonna be Oreos, <laughs> little baby Oreos. Cute. Um, what uh? Have we decided what we're gonna do for for her birthday? No. <laughs> we, took, we took Sam bowling. Yeah. I don't know if we want to do something with all her kids, especially after COVID and stuff. Yeah. Ah, still a pain. Yeah. COVID, 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 COVID. Sure to get to this point, I would like. All right. Well, let me close the window because it might be cooling it off. <clears throat> yeah. Don't. And lid on. Or, or, turn the lid on. Put the lid on. Just turn it on. Turn it on. Turn the lid on. Oh, the last time I made this too, we also uh, we made our own homemade egg noodles, which was fun. I thought about doing that tonight, but again, we were worried that if we took too long to do the stream, that the <clears> kids <throat> would just get completely crazy. Um, they actually seem like they're behaving quite well right now. They keep sneaking down. I keep hearing them. I know, but they've been really quiet at least. So. Um, yeah, I kind of, like, dialed back the making dessert and making noodles and stuff because I didn't want to, like, have the kids be in our face the whole time. 
Um, oh, you did. That's so fun. I bet they really liked that, though. My kids would love to do something like that, I think. Did you get to see Lightning the Queen? Mater? Um, but yeah, what are, what are some of your guys' like favorite like recipe, like family recipes or stuff like that? Um, I mean, we could, list, nice. we could list a lot. Oh, Doc Hudson was there. That's awesome. Um, what other things? Do you, well, my chocolate chip cookies, which I learned from my mom. Those are delicious. Amazing chocolate chip cookies. Especially like day of fresh. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, apple pie. I haven't, I haven't made it yet. I love apple pie. It, it, of all the pies, it's between apple pie and pumpkin pie. Mm-hmm. But anytime she's like, I should, I should make a pie. I'm like, is it going to be apple? <laughs> <laughs> we actually went apple picking this year, and we actually still have some of the apples. I was supposed to make apple pie. I just haven't had a chance to I was to just yet. thinking about that, too. Um, yeah, I learned how to make apple pie from my dad, too. Uh, he used to make a really good apple pie, so I feel you there. Um... Well, I learned how to make my tomato sauce from my mom as well. Um, we make a really good, like, uh, like lasagna, like, baked ziti kind of situation. It's delicious. You see your face? <laughs> you want to come say hi with your makeup on like that? Dad is trying to be crazy. All right, come on. All right, come on. <laughs> Okay, the little come, ones come, did want to come say hi. Come say hi. Careful. Watch out for the cord. Watch out for the cord. <laughs> oh my that's, gosh. That's worse because now it's going to be All right, well, come here. So they're going to eat dinner, obviously. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want to come say hi? Watch out for the cord, please. Let me fix your... Here's the mini, mini us. Mini us. <laughs> it one, or thing one, thing two. Mama, I kind of looks good. You, want to see this? you can barely see it on there, actually. I, they can probably see it pretty well. They can well. see it pretty well. Mama. <laughs> you just look really tired. That's what you look like right now. You just look really tired. I can't believe you did that with marker. What's wrong with you? This, my other little one tends to have... Um, yeah, this is why they were quiet. Um, yeah, she tends to have a like, bed head all day long, so don't mind the hair. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many times I brush it. Okay. You guys want to see dinner? Right. We're almost yeah. done. No, I'm in bed right now. I'm going to see almost. dinner. Almost. You want to look at it? You want to look at it? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yummy. Yeah. 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 I know. Tell, tell them why you like goulash. I like goulash. Because mommy and daddy make it. Is it delicious? It. Don't put your dirty feet up there. <laughs> can, we, can we stay down here now? Oh. And just chill on the couch? We're almost done. We're just gonna go chill on the couch. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the children. Okay, I'm gonna drain the noodles. I already have my colander in the sink. She's draining the noodles. I am a wizard! Smoke for dramatic effect. Oh my goodness. Well, actually. And then I'm gonna put them back in the pan because I'm gonna coat them with butter. Butter. Where's Nitro? Right? Nitro. Where's Nitro when you need him? And I'm gonna put the, the bread in the oven. I like it crispy, so I usually just put it right on the baking rack. Delicious. Delicious. Get some butter. <laughs> Probably. Oh no! Why would you do that, Jason? So yes, I'm gonna take a generous piece of butter to coat the egg noodles. Butter. We'll also use that for the bread. I need another drink, but I really don't want to open the uh, the freezer. Our freezer oh, makes a god awful noise. It's a terrible noise. And I want to protect your ears. I'm gonna mute and then I'm gonna open it. <laughs> hmm. 
There we go. <clears throat> Just so you can hear it anyways. Actually, wasn't that bad. Mm. All right, so just a couple more minutes on that, and then we will make a bowl so we can show it off for you guys. Um, Speaking of other... Yeah. Um, so, yes, good good call there, Jason. Yes, that is the recipe I'm using. I do adapt it. I make a few changes, so if you ever want to try it, definitely check it out. Delicious. Um, slide piece of taste is pretty authentic, so... It's pretty damn good. I'm getting some bowls. That's the sly seal of approval. He's kind of impossible to please with these, you know, like unicorn recipes that he remembers from his childhood. They have to be perfect, otherwise... They have to be perfect. Not authentic. So we're just going to let that simmer for like another two minutes. So normally, if I was making this on a regular diet, I would let it simmer for quite a while, like probably an hour, just because I like the flavors to like really like mash together well. But in the interest of time, and my kids are hungry, and we're hungry, and we want to move on to the other, you know, part two of the stream. So we're just going to probably cut it off, like I said, about 15 minutes. So there's really no wrong way to do the simmering part as long as you let it get to a boil and like let it like cook off a little bit with the tomato sauce. You don't want to use the fancy bowl? What fancy bowl? That's less fancy than these ones. What? I'm doing this so that I can show. All right, all right. All right, take a vote, guys. Here we go. Which bowl is better? Which one's the fancy bowl? The one with spots? Or the one that doesn't have anything so on it? So I just like this one because it holds like three times as much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to eat massive portions of it. Yeah. <laughs> Shorty says yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it is, Shorty. You always, you always pick her side when it's a convenience, but you, you never pick get, a side when it's the time to will choose. Will you get the amazing squeezy sour cream out? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a non-squeezy sour cream. I don't know, which would you prefer? I don't know. I don't know if I trust the non-sour cream. No, the non-squeezy one I just opened to make the cupcakes. Like, uh, yeah. Okay. Consider it retrieved. Yeah. All right. Sour cream. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna turn that off. Yeah! <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so. Good choice, buddy. Good choice. I put a nice helping of egg noodles at the bottom. I'm gonna actually use the tail for both. Okay. So, yeah, like. We're gonna eat it all tonight, anyways. We are not going to eat this whole pot of goulash tonight. Um, you want to bring this closer? No, I'm going to put it on... Display? Display, yeah. A little more of that to put in there. No, oh, man, my mouth wet water. It's so tasty. <laughs> Here we go. You see it? Looks amazing. <gasps> so steamy. And then I like to top it with a just nice a, dollop of sour cream, but I'm going to take this off. <laughs> it's too hot to eat. <laughs> it's so good. It is so, it is too hot to eat at the moment. Um, so the longer that you, the longer that you simmer it also, the more tender and like fall apart the stew meat's going to get. So and, and definitely the, I recommend simmering for quite a long time. The beef will absorb like a ton of the juice. And yeah. Really good. So, and you can't really see, but there is like a nice helping of broth in there. And now I'm going to put some sour cream on top because the sour cream makes it just that much more, just adds like a layer of flavor and texture. So there we go. Uh -oh. Mm, oh, and. Oh, careful you're stepping. Oh, oh, you're dripping. I'm dripping? Uh oh. Almost dripping. Almost dripping. Okay. So that's the finished product, guys. I'm so oh, excited. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed. Um, so we're going to take about, I mean, probably about, like, yeah, about a 15 minute eat. break. We're going to eat. So they make this here, and it's amazing. It's for like I mean, using it, comes it on in like. A tub too. Yeah, I mean, we have it in a tub, but so you can use obviously any sour cream, but I mean, we have children. This makes sour cream application very easy for them. And I trust this one to last a little longer than an opened container of sour cream that's been sitting out for three hours. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and so then our bread is going to finish. We're going to have some sliced 
warm crusty bread with the goulash and i tell you especially right now it's cold it's wet it's rainy it's like wintery fall it's amazing so i definitely um I recommend trying it out guys um well thank you so much it was so much yeah, fun actually uh this has been one of my favorite uh channel rewards so far i think i enjoyed like so i love to cook and so it was really nice to share it with you guys um i hope sly learned a little bit about how to make goulash did i <laughs> maybe maybe you guys I can't a give in because then i'll have to help or make it myself <laughs> Next one, I'll be like, make your own goulash. I taught you how. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, we are going to just, I'm going to stop stream for about, again, like 15 minutes. I'm just going to get dinner for the kids, eat a little bit myself, and then I will rejoin you at my computer and we are going to kick off some Jackbox games and, you know, whatever, whatever the night, wherever the night takes us. So um, thanks everybody for being an amazing community. I hope you enjoyed your reward and we'll be back shortly. Um, so we'll see you in a little bit. Go to Discord. Start making suggestions for the next reward. Yes, indeed. We would love love some suggestions for future uh, channel point rewards. So don't be shy. All right, guys. I'm going to put on intermission, and we'll be back in about 15 minutes. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.